Hi there Photoshoppers, welcome to my site and welcome to this video tutorial. This particular tutorial is on the coloring page, so it has to do with making this kind of thing, right? Uh, making all these strange colors, and different textures, and bringing character into your brush strokes. Now the original video I did for brushes dealt with shape dynamics and other dynamics. Shape dynamics is how Adobe says size, and you can see down here, okay? As I press harder, it gets it gets bigger, and let's just get a there. Okay, so as I press harder, it gets bigger. Neat. And you notice I'm not using a standard round 20 pixel soft edge brush. I'm using a strange one. Okay, so that's size. Now down here is other opacity. This is pretty much what the other video covered, um, and it's set for pen pressure. And as I press harder, it gets darker, and that's opacity. Yeah, that's that's pretty good if you're using a uh, an adjustment layer. Now, if I want to change the thing I'm going to talk about are the jitters, J I T T E R. That means, uh, or what jitter means, is it introduces randomness into a brush stroke. So let's turn this jitter up and see what happens. You can see down here what happens. It's going to be that kind of thing, and let's see if that's true. Oh yeah, it is, isn't that? Look at that, isn't that neat? So what it's done is it's given some character to the brush strokes. And uh, character is good because it just makes things look a bit better. Okay, so that's that's the jitter with opacity. Okay, but that's not what I'm here to show you today. Let's turn that one off. Let's go to this one. This is the fun one. Other dynamic or color dynamics, I'm sorry. Color dynamics starts with the background color and as you press harder with your pen, it gets flowing into the foreground color. And if you kind of go halfway, you can mix the colors together and get all kinds of strange things going on there. Okay, so that's that's what what the uh, the the uh, color dynamics does. And I'm trying to mix it in ways that I can't with this. So now let's get rid of that. Now let's start playing with the jitters, the randomization. Foreground background jitter is now under the control of pen pressure. And this is what it does. Start with light pressure. It looks pretty much the same. Oh, but look at this. Now we've got other things going on in there. So it's completely changed the brush stroke. And if I go real hard, I get the uh, predominantly red, but I do get some of the blue coming in still. So it's randomized the brush stroke. And, uh, well, that's kind of weird, actually. Okay, let's get rid of it. Okay, it starts look let's look at some of the other jitters. Now, you'll be glad to know most people that if you use hue, jitter, saturation, brightness, or purity, they will all work with your mouse. Which astounded me, but that's the way it is. That's the way Adobe set it. So let's set this one up to hue jitter. And it's going to randomize the hues. And there it is. If you like rainbowy things, well, there you go. You got it. The full rainbow. And let's take this one off. Let's put saturation jitter on. So it should randomize the saturation. That's a completely different brush stroke from the other one, isn't it? And if you work at it, you might be able to mix these together and get some different colors going on there. That's real heavy pressure. Let's back off. It's a funny, funny dynamic, isn't it? Okay, let's take that one off. Now this is the one. Hold on to your chair. Uh, this is the strange one. This is the, the interesting one. This is the one I like. Look at what it's doing here. Light pressure, heavy pressure. Because we've still got pen pressure for opacity going on here, or for color dynamics. And it's introducing this black tone in there, randomly. And uh, that's quite an interesting uh, brush stroke. Okay, let's go back and start adding these together. So we'll do foreground, background, and hue jitter together. Nice, huh? And let's add in some saturation jitter. Don't see an awful lot of difference between the two of them. And let's take it. Oh, we've got brightness already on. So I, I forgot to take brightness off. <coughs> Terrible. I should remember those things. So that's what it does. That's what the jitters will do for you. 
Now the last one is purity. I didn't talk about purity because it's uh, a different cat. Now I'm going to take this bit down here to about halfway. There we go. Halfway. Now you can see it's it's not going to be as pure colors. The colors aren't going to be as pure if I can get my English right here. But you know you can't see an awful huge difference but there definitely is. You can see where the the lower purity was done there. If I take it all the way down, this is what you get. You get this black and white and grays. Little bits of white, little bits of black, lots of grays. Now what use would this be, you may ask? Well, I'll show you what use this is. But first I want to talk about the other ones and where they, they're useful. On the website, on my web page, the coloring web page, there's that picture of the Fairy Queen with her wolf and her horse. So let's take a look at that. Just I'm going to pause this and bring it up. This is the picture. Now when I was painting this or coloring this, the dress, the hair, the wolf, the horse, the foreground, they were all done this way. With only foreground, background, jitter, and purity turned on. When I went to the sky, I added just a little bit of hue jitter. So I got just a little bit of uh, some ready tones in there. When I went to the foreground, I went back again. I took off that hue jitter. Maybe I put this much in. And you can see the numbers that I had on the, uh, on the page. The tree is a different matter. Everything got turned on, I think, if I recall correctly. Because this is a mystical picture, and I am allowed artistic license to make the tree any way I want it to be. And that's the way I chose to make it. And the leaves, they had some huge jitter in them as well. Okay, so that's what you can do with this. It's not a bad looking picture, you know, I'm darn proud of myself for painting it. Okay, let's go back and look at the, uh, the purity thing again. Hang on. Now we're back on this white piece of paper. All the jitters are turned on and the purity is turned right off. So this is what I get. Okay? And uh, it, it's kind of interesting. And you can use this on a straight line drawing that doesn't have a lot of textures built into it already. Like this one, the kitty cat. This is a little kitty cat that I downloaded. The uh, kitty cat by itself was like this, without any coloring done. Oops. There we go. That's the way the kitty cat came. No texture in the face. So I did some painting. I did that. The tongue and the nose. Did the eye. And the eyes there. And I wanted to add some texture into this rest of the cat, of the kit. So I took uh, the settings like this and just painted it. In. I don't know what brush I used, but I used one of them. And now I can add a new layer. I can change its blend mode to color. And I can find a nice kitty color. To me, this is a kitty color. Kind of this yellowy, browny color. Uh, let's get it down there. Okay, that is kind of a kitty color. Now, because the blend mode's color, color will only be applied to anything that's black or gray, not white. Oh, let's turn off the dynamics. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So that's where you can use this. And that is kind of fun. So now there's my little kitty cat, all painted in. There you go. So that's how you use the jitters. Now I'm sure that you'll find many different ways to be jittering along in your projects. But uh, practice these for a while. They're fun to do. You can make some really cool backgrounds. You can do all kinds of fun things with them. So now you've got uh, size, opacity, color dynamics. We've got a couple more to do here. We'll do scattering texture and dual brush on some video in the future. Uh, but we've covered the important ones and the fun ones. And in incidentally, if I change this back to normal, you can see what it does. Yuck. Eh. Let's go back to color. Blend modes are cool. Got no blend modes. Okay, so there you go. Um, I guess this is Brush's video too. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found something useful in it. Uh, go off and color something now and use lots of jitters. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you came in through YouTube, visit my website. You've got the, the URL up here somewhere. And uh, I'll be glad to see you. Thanks. Bye now.